Hello, ako si Jose Barbasa, gikan diri sa Dubai, UAE. Ug di kami kag si Cardinal Chito kada Domingo sa The Word Exposed sa Jescom TV. Mopay nga oras, kay ako si Christopher Primo, di kami sa Siudad ng Borongan, si Mirangan Summer. Ug di kami niyo nga ni Cardinal Chito kada Domingo sa The Word Exposed sa Jescom TV. May poras po kaya kayo nga, ako po yung Richardo Dingat, ba't kayong San Fernando Pampanga, at agkatanda kayo po, kayabe ng Cardinal Chito Tagle, Amanel B, King The Word Expose, King Jazzcom TV, Balang Domingo, bang kanita po, sabi-sabi tayo ang pagnilayan, yung may pabalita, nagkakatamugin. See you there everyone! Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Jazzcom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ciao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in today's Gospel, the Lord teaches us to prepare for the arrival of the Master of the House. How do we do it? By being watchful, by remaining focused on Him, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. And when should we be watchful? Every time, at all times. The Lord himself said, You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Faith keeps us watchful and alert. But if faith weakens, what will we look forward to? A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord, the divine institution. The Word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The Word of the Lord. Faith in darkness. I do not mean having faith or believing in darkness, but how do we maintain this gift of God, vibrant faith, especially in moments of darkness, in the darkness of the night? You know, while there are many, many beautiful things happening in our world today, we cannot also deny that in the lives of individual persons, in the lives of communities and countries, there seems to be an experience of never-ending night or darkness. But we also look at the witness of those who live in darkness, their witness of vibrant faith. And we should not forget that. That's what our readings for today also point to. In the first reading from the Book of Wisdom, the author talks about that night. That night. What was that night? The author was already talking about, was talking about the night of the Passover, the first Passover. The night where God will pass over the houses of the Israelites. The night of liberation from slavery. Yes, it was dark. But in that darkness, God will work and liberate his people. But the interesting thing that we find in the first reading is that, according to the author, the forefathers or the ancestors of the Israelites already saw that night. Meaning, the ancestors of the Israelites, before they ended up in slavery in Egypt, already saw the coming of that night. They saw that future where God will liberate his people. But these ancestors did not see, did not experience that night. 
They did not live to see that night of liberation, but they saw it from afar. And they were already united with their, the next generations who will experience that night in faith. My dear brothers and sisters, in faith, people could participate in the darkness and also the victory of other people, even of the future generations, seeing in faith the darkness that becomes light for the future. In the second reading, the letter to the Hebrews talks about our ancestors in faith, Abraham, Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, who were promised to become <laughs> the parents of so many descendants, countless descendants. Of course, we know their story. I mean, Abraham was advanced in age. Sarah was known to be barren. But they believed, <laughs> they believed the promise, this dark promise. Dark because it, it was humanly impossible. But in the darkness of the promise, they believed. And according to the letter to the Hebrews, Sarah believed because the one who promised is trustworthy. The faith. Now, they did not see, they did not live to see the many descendants, but they already saw in faith the future. But that meant believing or entering the darkness of faith where the only light is the one who makes the promise. My dear brothers and sisters, now, as we enter the darkness of situations, there is the light that comes from the dark faith, telling us, believe in the one who speaks to us. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come 
on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour, and will punish the servant severely, and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations, nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Faith in the darkness. Yes, as we face uh, dark moments in life that might lead to despair, hopelessness, the question is how? How can we endure the darkness of life, the trials? And the response of our readings is faith. But faith is also entering darkness. You know, faith is not always bright. It is dark because it is presenting to us a vision that we do not always see clearly, but it provides us a light in the person of God who speaks to us. In the first reading, the ancestors of the Israelites already saw in faith that night of Passover and liberation. Many of them did not live to experience it, but they saw in faith and in the midst of, of trials and slavery that night. And so they were always rejoicing already in faith and in hope. In the second reading, the letter to the Hebrews uh, presents this, uh, uh, the models of faith, especially Abraham and Sarah, who went through the darkness of being childless and being scorned and humiliated. But then they entered the darkness of faith. God promised that they would have a son. And from them, they will have countless descendants. They believed. <laughs> they believed in the God who made that promise. And they did not see that promise fulfilled. But they saw in faith the fulfillment. Oh, wonderful. Now the gospel. Jesus tells his disciples to always be alert. No? Now, what was the experience of darkness here? St. Luke seems to be addressing no, the attitude of his readers and hearers, the attitude that, uh, well, the second coming of the Lord seems to be delayed. Jesus promised to come again. And the early Christians thought that Jesus would come again soon. But there seemed to be a delay. And some followers of Christ said, okay, <laughs> there is a delay in coming, in his coming. Then let us just manage our lives the way we want to. No? But St. Luke no, uh, reminds them, in that moment of seeming delay, in that moment of darkness where, as we await the second coming of the Lord, Christians were subjected to persecution, conflicts, etc. As you, as you enter that darkness, don't let your faith die. And how do you keep that faith vibrant? It says, keep your responsibility. If you have received a responsibility from the Lord, fulfill it. Always focus on the Lord who will come anytime soon. So do not lose your focus on Him. He said He will come again. Believe in that. It might happen now. So do not forget that. That is faith. In whatever you're doing, don't let a moment pass without thinking of the Lord, for he might come. And when you do that, you will respect your brothers and sisters. You will not be abusive towards others. You will not forget your responsibility. You will be industrious. And 
You will not be fearful. You will share whatever you have with the poor. All of this you will do because your faith tells you, I am looking for the Lord. I am waiting for the Lord. I see the Lord even in the seeming delay, even in the difficulties of life. I know the Lord is here and the Lord will fulfill his promise and the Lord will come. That is faith, not losing our focus on the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we are bombarded with so much negative news. Uh, and some of us might feel discouraged. I am not saying that we should pretend that those disastrous things are not happening. No, we have to face them. But as we face the negativity in the world brought by criminality, injustice, wars, violence, please let us also look at the signs of vibrant faith lived by those who are persecuted, lived by those who are suffering. They tell us what faith is and they are counted among the present-day Abrahams and Sarahs of today. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. St. Teresia Benedicta a Croce, more popularly known as St. Edith Stein, was a Carmelite nun who was martyred at Auschwitz, the concentration camp, in 1942. It was reported that after her arrest by the Gestapo, she was able to call their convent in Echt and spoke with her sister Rosa. She told her, come, we are going for our people. Saint Edith was a German of Jewish descent. She witnessed how the Nazi regime persecuted the Jews, but her life prior to her martyrdom is equally edifying. She was not exactly a religious person. In fact, at the age of 13, she no longer practiced her Jewish faith. At the university, she was particularly interested in philosophy and phenomenology. She became a student of the outstanding philosopher Edmund Husserl. In 1917, she became one of the first women in Germany to become a doctor of philosophy. She was every inch a scholar, teaching under Husserl while developing her own philosophical slant and writing her own articles, until she read the autobiography of St. Teresa of Avila, which influenced her to embrace Christianity. Baptized in 1922, she later became a Carmelite nun in 1933. What she said about scholarship is inspiring. This is a good call to all of us, brothers and sisters. What are we doing with our knowledge and creativity? Are we using it to serve God? When we discover or invent things, do we consider how these might advance God's work? When we formulate and forward ideas, do we consider how they could speak of God's word? When we create and produce things, do we also consider how these might spread God's love? Let us take our knowledge and creativity seriously, but we must strive to use them to lead more people to God, whose work is our redemption, whose word is our food, and whose love draws us to Him and our neighbor. 
St. Edith Stein said, Friends, on the 9th of August, we will celebrate the memorial of this saint who used her scholarly writings to lead people to the crucified Christ. This saint went for her people and died with them. St. Edith Stein, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, recall difficult moments in your life where faith kept you courageous and hopeful. Alalahanin ang mga napakahirap na pinagdaanan mo sa buhay, pero pananampalataya ang nagbigay sa iyo ng lakas at ng pag-asa. The second point is, How can we inspire vibrant faith in the youth? Paano natin mabubuhay sa mga kabataan ang isang buhay na buhay na pananampalataya? Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.